2 Corinthians 11.3, Paul says, I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, in other words, by his schemes, by his devices, I'm afraid that just as he did that to Eve, that your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Paul is definitely concerned that these Corinthians might be led astray by the serpent. And his fear is that they might be led astray just like Eve was. And how was she led astray? Precisely by being ignorant of the devil's designs to destroy her. The Corinthians knew about it. But what happens is we forget. When it comes to the practicalities, when the devil's upon us, suddenly we forget what his tactics are. Go back to 2 Corinthians 2.11 and look at the, the last portion of verse 11. We are not ignorant of his designs. You all see the word designs. The devil is thinking. He's contemplating. He's strategizing. He has an intellect. This has to do with his reasoning powers and capacity for thinking as he schemes against God's people. Christian, the devil thinks about you. He is a schemer. He is a planner. Just think about this. There are wicked angels spending their time using all their thinking capacities to engineer cruel designs meant to oppose those who hope in Christ and those who seek to be faithful witnesses to Christ. We need to not be ignorant of that, brethren. We are on His radar screen. Now go back to chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And look at verse 14. He's talking about false prophets, false apostles, just false teachers that come in and how they sell themselves. And he says this, And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. The devil is not only a designer. The devil wants us ignorant of his designs. Say, how do you know that? Because he disguises himself. As he's about his business and doing his schemes, he wants to appear different than he truly is, seen by the very fact that he wears disguises. Now this, brethren, this is a very helpful observation. It means that when and where he's up to his devilishness, things will appear different on the surface than they really are. Then listen, the devil knows throughout history. Isn't it true? It's like, as long as we're not aware He's there, we think we're going through different things. And There is something about the church of God. When she sets her eyes on the devil and recognizes He's there, there's something that just emboldens the church of Christ. They rise up and they withstand Him. He knows that. He knows when the church of God recognizes His presence, we typically become prayerful, we typically become bold and even fierce in our stand against Him. Brethren, this He does not want. The devil is all too aware that when the church of God arises and is awake and watching and praying, she goes to God Almighty to fetch power against Him. He knows that. Oh yes, He knows, brethren that the weapons that God has instilled in the church are mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds. And those are His strongholds. He knows it. He's got concussions and split, fractured skull and wounds and bruises from the brothers and sisters that have gone before us. He knows that we in and of ourselves are weak. And it must just cause Him unending fury. But when God instills His power in us. Brethren, we pull down strongholds. The enemy's tactics, I'll tell you what they are, and you know this. One, divide. Two, discourage. Three, deaden. Let us realize our oneness in Christ. Let us be strong and of good courage and seek zealously and continuously the quickling influences of the Holy Spirit. Brethren, His devices are the same today as then. He seeks to divide. Of course the devil wants to divide. Why? What happens when he divides? Brethren, when he divides a church, what immediately happens? Our focus isn't outward anymore. Our focus isn't against Him. It isn't against taking ground from Him. Suddenly we start fighting against each other. Our, our strength, our energies go into defending ourselves. Into proving ourselves right and others wrong. 
division scatters. Where two or three are gathered together in My name. You see unity there. They come together. He's there to split. He's trying to split, split families. Isn't this what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7? Do not deprive one another except perhaps by agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer, but then come together again so that, that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Right? Satan is looking to divide on the basic level of the family and right into the church. Division. Division. We see the design of Satan on every level. Beware when you feel offended by others. To cover over a multitude of sin. To not be so thin-skinned. To let things pass. Brethren, beware. Beware when somebody does something and suddenly that voice comes in your head. You know what I mean. You just Thoughts come in there and suddenly you're thinking some evil thought about somebody else. Brethren, watch it. The second thing, discourage. What is discourage? That's t- it, isn't that a, another military tactic? You take the courage out of your enemy. Take the courage out. That means they're no longer lion-hearted. They're no longer... No longer bold. Brethren, lion hearted men and women of courage turn the world upside down, and the devil seems to walk through this world carrying a special cup of cold water to put out that kind of soul fire. He looks for men and women who are full of passion, and he's looking to put that passion out. Let me throw my cup of cold water to discourage, take the courage out of them. Of course, the main weapon in his arsenal to discourage us is simply his lying lips. Right? I mean, think about the things he comes along and says to us. Look at all the sin. Look at the sin in your life. You think God's going to use you? You're nobody. You're weak. Look what you are. Or he comes along and he says, you know, look at all the other gifted people in the church. God has just kind of passed you on. God has forgotten you. That old snake, he's a liar, he's a slanderer. And look, he'll slander you to you. He's going to come to you and say, God won't use you. You aren't a fit vessel. You're too something. You're too young, you're too old, you're too stupid, you're too backward, you're too new a Christian, you're too uneducated. You're not like brother so-and-so, you're not like sister so-and-so. I mean, what's the use? You Don't go to prayer meeting. I mean, what good is it? You don't say, those prayers don't get answered. And if they do, they're not your prayers. They're somebody else's. I mean, it's just, it's a constant line of deceit. What's the use of memorizing Scripture? What's the use of setting time aside to get your family together to look at God's Word and pray? What's the use of evangelizing? Nothing ever happens. Nobody's ever been saved through your preaching or through your evangelism. Brethren, I'll tell you, when he's trying to discourage, if there's anything he tries to discourage, it is prayer. God is sovereign. Your prayers don't matter. Jesus says in a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. Brethren, why? Because that is our tendency to lose heart. The devil is constantly trying to douse and discourage and make us lose heart when it comes to prayer. God doesn't hear you. Your prayers don't matter. Praying doesn't work. The sovereignty thing, brethren. The sovereignty thing. He'll get us. He'll try to get us with that. That God has His purposes and He's going to do it whether you pray or not. That's not what Scripture says. Brethren, we are told in Scripture, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Be of courage. Brethren, repeatedly, three times where He said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. He said, don't fear. Be of good courage. Be strong. Three times. Be of good courage. Have courage, man. We are people that ought to have courage. God is with us. We can take on angels, brethren. Not in our own strength, but in His. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, be strong in the Lord in the strength of His might. We can look the devil in the eyes. We can confess we're weak. But in Christ, brethren, we are strong in the Lord. That's how you get men like C.T. Studd. Have you ever read? Just go go Google C.T. Studd quotes. The man had just phenomenal. Every once in a while I'll do that. Every time it just... Listen to two of them. 
Let us not glide through this world and then slip quietly into heaven without having blown the trumpet loud and long for our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Let us see to it that the devil will hold a thanksgiving service in hell when he gets the news of our departure from the battlefield. Brethren, the devil is trying to put us to sleep. And he'll come along. You need to seek security, safety, rest, comfort, ease, says the devil. Sleep your life away in front of the computer, in front of the TV. And this is so often the one. Yes! Be aggressive! Tomorrow, you have time. You need rest right now. You'll get after this thing tomorrow. Oh, what words! Brethren, how often the term later, how much damage that's done to Christian. You have lots of time. May God give us the grace. You remember revival hymn, I Ian Paisley? The church of Jesus Christ is largely sleeping like a great bedroom. And you've all Christians in bed and they're all sleeping. And they're saying, please don't wake me up. I want to sleep on. And of course, when God starts to operate a revival, people cannot sleep. You can't sleep in church when the Spirit of God awakes the people. Look at the first verse of the 52nd chapter of Isaiah. Awake! Awake! Put on strength! Wake up, you sleepy Christians! Awake, thou that sleepest! Arise from the dead. Christ will give you life. In all of it, the devil's tactics come back to it's really amazing to me. Brethren, does not Mark say it? The Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark 1.1 1, 1. This, is, this is the righteousness of Christ. It is the truth of Christ. It is the salvation of Christ. It is the Gospel of Christ. The, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. That Word of God is called the Word of Christ. Christ is the Word of God. In these past days, past times, God spoke to us by the prophets. In this time, brethren, He speaks to us by His Son. It is the Word of Christ. It is the Word that Jesus said, This reveals Me. In this you look for life. It speaks of Me. Brethren, at all, pray. Did not, he, did not he say that we should pray, brethren? We should pray. He said, if you ask anything in My name, I will do it. Our prayers are in His name. The Word is His Word. It is the Word of Christ. Brethren, it all comes back there. It is all there. All the armor brings us back to Christ. How we stay united. How we stay undiscouraged. Full of courage. Full of boldness. How we stay alive. I mean, it comes at us everywhere in all different manners and symbolism and allegory. We have to abide in Christ. We, have, we are those branches that have to stay abiding in the vine. Take this home with you. Try to identify the one thing in your life that most takes you away from thinking about Christ when you're involved in it and put it out of your life. Every one of us put away that one thing in our life that most distracts us from Christ, most takes our thoughts away from Him, most, I mean, whether it's something you read, something you do on the internet, something you do on television, or in a movie, or with your friends, or conversations you get into, if there's anything you can pinpoint in your life that is the greatest area that steers you away from thinking about Christ, then let's all do spiritual amputation and be rid of it. God help us to do that kind of inventory. These are cosmic powers. These are authorities. Brethren, we have high-ranking angelic beings who are furious with short time scheming and disguised. And brethren, who are they making war against? I mean, this is the thing. You know, we so much see with our eyes. And we look around. What you need to understand is in all their ranks and their dominions and their hierarchy and their authority levels and their power levels, it is not the mayor of San Antonio they're against. They're not against the police. They're not against the National Guard. They're not against our military bases. They're against us. They're coming for us. Those 
who fear God, those who keep His commandments, because we're on the radar screen, brethren. Now that's a good place to be. That's not a bad place to be. He who is with us is greater. I'm not telling you we need to cower up and go in the corner. In fact, just the opposite. His schemes are meant to get us there. Let us be victorious in this fight. Brethren, He that is with us is greater than he that's in the world. We can do this. And we will be victorious in the end. And brethren, He will come on with a fury. And the battlefield may be strewn with some bodies. But brethren, press on. This fight is not in vain. And we will be more than conquerors. Brethren, neither angel or powers. Those are two of the things there in Romans 8. They can't separate us from the love of Christ. No matter how furious He may come on, there's no angel going to separate us from the love of Christ. We are in the Father's hand. And the devil himself cannot move one of those fingers. We can't pry them back. We're in a safe place. Brethren, He may come on like a roaring lion. Our great Savior has pulled His fangs out. He may still have roar, but He's got no bite. You know why? Because though He take our life, we go straight to glory. There's no hell anymore. He can't threaten us with damnation. We're free people. We're people of the King. And He's given us a sword. The Word of God. The promises. Brethren, the promises. Don't weary. Don't tire. Press on. This is a battle to the end. It's life and death. It's a battle for the soul. Press on, brethren. May some of that CT stud fire fill our veins. Stuff that took John G. Payton in the New Hebrides. May it take us up and down our own streets. And others of us to faraway places we don't yet know. God help us, brethren. It's good to come the devil's radar screen. When He doesn't mess with us any longer, when we're no longer a concern to Him, brethren, that's a bad sign. That means we're all asleep. And I'll tell you, you keep reading there in Revelation 12, it says He defeats the saints. Brethren, you start the book out. He's going to throw some of us in prison for ten days. That's all in this world. He may strew our bloody bodies across the battlefield, but brethren, we're more than conquerors nevertheless. Because we will stand there with Christ before us, risen. The grave is going to keep us. And we will judge angels, will we not? We will cast sentence against the devil himself. And we will watch our victor throw him in the lake of fire. We are more than conquerors. 